This is something that we would solve for at the end of the problem, okay? So likely, it's very likely that before you solve this or use this technique to check, well, that's what you'd be doing. You'd be checking, all right? So maybe after 30 minutes of work, you could get to this point. By the way, um, if I haven't mentioned this already, this is what I found. Only about, well, uh, it's different in college, but I would say about five out of every 100 students actually will check their work. Here's the question, all right, is if you were on a game show and they said, look, if you solve this problem correctly, you will get $100,000. Would you check then? I hope you would. Now, I know you didn't pay $100,000 for this class, but um, if you retake it 100 times, you probably have, okay? So, and that's not a bad, it's just treat it like that, okay? Treat it like $100,000 is on the line, because then you should check. If 100000 is not enough to buy you off, make it like a million or something like that, okay? But I only find that maybe five, one to 5% of my students actually will check their work. So we make problems like this to get you into practicing it, but still no one ever usually does. All right, in order to check if it is a solution to the system, we have an X, a Y, and I'll make that a little bit darker, a Z value. Those are always going to be in alphabetical order. Seems like there were some homework problems like that. They're doing that on purpose, all right? Always in alphabetical order. So we're going to take each of these equations and see if it gives us a true statement with that x, y, and z value specifically. So let's write this first equation. All right, so this is kind of the foundation of that first equation. My x value I'm saying is 1. My y value is 1. And my z value is 4. Now. As soon as I find one equation that gives us not a true statement, then I don't have to worry about any other ones. It's just not a solution for the system. So what does this give us? Uh, 2 minus 1, and this would be plus 12. And the question is, does this equal 13? Well, 2 minus 1 would give us 1 plus 12. Does it equal 13? 1 plus 12 is 13, which does equal 13. That is true. Is that okay? Am I going too slow? Set up the next one, so I'm just going to put my coefficients. And once again, we've got an x value of 1, a y value of 1, and a z value of 4. So we got 3 plus 2 plus 8 equals 13. And if I add all three of these, I get 13. That was a little sloppy there, but equals 13. So this one's true as well. It's a lot of work for um, just seeing if it's true. You guys are going to enjoy doing this on your calculator, so that's good. So is this a solution to the system? Yes.